The all-new Mercedes C-Class convertible is today on Auto Gefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. And maybe in the background you already hear the C63S and this is also one key to our review here today because we will show you different versions in exterior, interior and of course in the driving. For example here, this is the top model C63S, the top AMG model with the V8. The one right next to me in this so-called Thomas blue color, very beautiful, the C400 and the silver one, the C43. So that's kind of the AMG light version. We'll explain you all the differences. Let's now go with Autogefühl in full HD, full screen and full length. And we're starting with the design with the C300. And my point is that already in a C300 you can put a design exterior package in a way that you don't really see so many differences to the higher models. Already this version here can be pimped in a way that it's very beautiful in design and also very sporty. So we will also be fine with one of the entry versions, definitely. It's not only about what is beneath the hood, but of course more power is available. And now the C400 and later on I will tell you why I would pick exactly that car. Not only because of this brilliant blue color, which is definitely Thomas Blue, I would call it that way. I just love it. Also because of the engine. In the driving I will tell you, I will not sort the engine overview, I will tell you why this was here my tip for that start. In the front, relatively the same to the other models we have and what I found very beautiful here is we got the chrome contrast on the lower part to the blue color and I also really like this diamond pin grille and you've seen here we have the blue roof choice it corresponds very well to the blue exterior 4 meters 68 is the total length of this car and as the coupe it sits 15 millimeters lower than the sedan version of the c-class 17 inch alloys would be standard production this one here 19 optional and of course you want to see how does it look like with the roof down just from a look and if you have the keyless entry package you can also open and close the roof with the key here um, uh, some other guys tried it with a C63 as this one for example did not have the keyless entry package it's not um, possible here I think it's a great option to pick it um, because it's you know when you're maybe sitting in front of a, a vegan ice cream parlor then you can also already open and close the roof and that's the setup here now with the windows up and that will also allow us driving open top in winter time there are also uh, air scarf available, you know, there has been this discussion, um, uh, you know, Mercedes had legal issues there, but um, it seems to be fixed right now, so we can already get air scarf again, and also this air cap function, I can also show you very uh, soon, or we have already shown you that in Geneva. So both functions here, they create a kind of warm central part in the car, and so you can really drive with open top all season long. Here again, 
Let's see if we can also lower down the windows when we press open the key and then this is here now the final side view with everything open. What do you think guys? And the rear of the C400 and you can see if you compare it to the sedan version of the Mercedes C-Class you have more horizontal drawn taillights as we've seen in a coupe and that would be a crucial factor also for me. That's also one of the reasons I really like the coupe better than the sedan version and I mean me as a convertible guy I would always go for convertible even if the coupe is maybe the most beautiful car from the exterior design this one delivers so much more open top fun and let's close the roof again i think always just a handy function to close it with the key it works until a speed of 50 kilometers an hour by the way and that's a very hey guys <laughs> that's a very handy solution always because you know for example Mercedes SL is also one of my favorite cars but I had some situations when driving it that I got into sudden rain and then I wasn't able to close the roof while driving and here this is a much more handy solution and light solution and Mercedes has already told us that most of the other future models for example also um, also the SL will get a soft top again only it says that the former SLK or the SLC now that one is supposed to remain the hard top but in general most of the industry is now set on the soft tops again because they are from a very good material um, now and also are very durable that's the main difference and also very good from the sound insulation meanwhile and so you just use it that they are less in weight and another important information considering the roof we have tested it and said, wow, it's very well insulated. We had the special acoustic roof as well, so the same concept that this Audi using. And how does it work? First of all, you start with a basic black roof. So that one is also available as a non-acoustic roof, non-special insulated. And then also for the black roof, you can get optionally the special insulation. And if you see a blue, red or this brown roof, this one always comes with a special insulation. But of course it's the same price so again black standard or insulated and the colors just with the top insulated roof and if you're also driving the convertible quite often close and that does happen in bad weather i think it's a good choice to go for to have a very calm atmosphere inside And this year, the C43, before those models here, the so-called AMG light models, I always call them that way, they're better in the price-performance ratio, for example, than the top C63. And, of course, they have enough power already with the V6 with uh, you know, way over 300 horsepower, 367 usually. And here, the C43, you see in the front, you don't see so many differences because the other cars we've shown you also have those AMG packages. And so you can also design your basic C convertible also in a very sporty way already. Also here with the diamond pin grill, but here we have an AMG logo. The bigger difference, however, happens here in the rear because here with the C43, we have the carbon fiber rear wing and also another exhaust pipes and the bigger diffuser so from the rear you can really differentiate those cars and also the sound is a little bit different we'll soon also show you a sound test and the top model mercedes amg c63s you can see it sits a little bit lower even and the lower bumper is even stronger but well very spectacular in this matte white color you can also feel that it's a matte style and has a different front grille. We don't have this diamond pin grille, which I find very beautiful here with the two fin grille. And again, 2D Mercedes logo in the front because the sensors are hidden beneath here and also a front camera. And what I want to know from you is which design you find more pleasing, less aggressiveness, less sportiness, maybe with the diamond pin grille or here, the top AMG version. In my opinion, Again, I quite often think less is more. I found the other ones a little bit more beautiful. The side profile here in the top AMG version can also be differentiated. First of all, special alloys. Well, all of the ones we've shown you are all 19 inch, but those ones look more aggressive because of this two color scheme, definitely. Then the V8 bi turbo sign on the side part here, carbon fiber mirror caps, and also contrasting lower carbon bumpers. 
that looks very massive here. Of course, the side line in general, by the way, I think they have managed it quite well that they created some kind of the coupe line. The coupe line is, of course, a little bit more round here in this area, but overall also with the closed top, a very beautiful appearance. Or oh, what's your opinion? And the rear, this one really screams out, I am aggressive. The one, two, three, four pipes, massive diffuser, and of course, a way different sound. And this carbon fiber wing. And here again, I think, the more elegant way is more beautiful to me, but maybe you have a different opinion and really prefer this really sporty design of the AMG 63S. Also, the roof is available in four colors. You've maybe already seen it. Black, blue, red and brown. I personally would prefer, prefer blue or black. My camera woman today prefers the red one. Yeah, she's laughing right now, as it is right here. So everything for your preferences is ready here. And this is also here the C63S model in a different color layout. I always love to show you so many different color layouts. And now it's time to compare the sound. C400, C43 and C63S. Let's take a look at the interior and reminds us really of the C-Class Coupe and I think yeah, a very beautiful clean interior Mercedes is leading it in as for the design. Maybe Audi offers a little bit more build quality but here design wise my absolute favorite in the mid-size segment. It usually starts with cloth seats as at Mercedes and then you also get options like um, Dynamica, the microfiber on the inside and outside with leatherette. This one here, the full genuine leather equipment, do not go for it. Search for um, the other options in the price list and you don't sweat on the seats and it's not cold in winter and you also protect some animals. Mercedes usually has great offerings for the alternatives here, more than the other premium manufacturers. Look at the cockpit and steering wheel, perforated at the sides. And also in the middle console, wood is being used and matte aluminum, a great style combination. And everything you see is usually also from solid metal, if it looks like metal. And so you've got a great premium interior, definitely. And it doesn't have to hide, for example, if you compare it to a Mercedes SL, which is double the price. Let's get inside. I would prefer that they may change the key. This one gets a little bit old. It's still quite solid, but you know, something new would be great. Keyless entry here as well. So you can, for example, close it just by holding your hand here and open it by pulling the... Look at that one. Very beautiful with the chrome style, isn't it? Let's get inside. 
she opens very wide that you can also get in the rear. We'll also test the rear very soon. And this is also one good thing if you think about, you know, a true sports car convertible. Mm, definitely not as comfortable as that one here. It will move the seat a little bit far back. Of course, not the most handy solution that's here on the inside now when the door is open for you for camera. But other than that, it's quite nice to have it right there, definitely. With the key, also the steering wheel can be adjusted electronically, right here, flat and end. And you got a great sporty position, but not, let's see, not um, too much sporty, because you still have comfortable feeling. Basically the same seating version than in the C-Class Coupe. They're also basically in the same class, only um, that the roof is missing here and therefore some of the lower parts have been stiffened up here to get this chassis stiffness here always for the convertible. And overall bars also pop out for uh, safety reasons. So overall also a more comfortable situation for example than in the Mercedes SL because it's even a little bit lower. Um, some might argue oh, it's a sports car for lazy people. No, I wouldn't say so because it has a lot of power. I can tell you all soon, very, very soon with the engines. And see also the cockpit has a very sporty style. Just slim view here to the front screen. And this promises, of course, sporty fun already from the feeling here. Inside of the doors, you can see the controls for the seats are hidden here. It's a very beautiful design. Also a seat ventilation is possible here, but if you go for Kloss or Alcantara seats on the seat surfaces, you probably won't need that. Burmester sound system here as well to have a very good sound option and of course very expensive, but for music lovers, maybe not too bad. And again, those comfort features in detail, seat heating, seat cooling, three levels, and then the air scarf. It's, it's not flickering by the way in real life, it's a, a constant LED three levels to blow warm air to your neck. And this middle convertible button for all four windows to raise or lower all four windows at the same time. This here to control the roof from the inside. Um, you have to apply the brake to do it from the inside then. And this one here is the air cap. When I activate this here, some very interesting things happen. See it right here and it looks a little bit weird from the outside, definitely. We've seen it in the E-Class convertible and new is that the new E-Class convertible will get also a new E-Class on the new chassis and because a little bit complicated, before the E-Class convertible was based on the C-Class. Now this is a true C-Class convertible, also named C-Class and the new E-Class convertible will also be a true E-Class convertible. I hope you got what I mean. And this system was taken from the former E-Class convertible, this air cap system that leads the airflow higher so that no cold air in winter times comes into the cabin. It's drawn way above that one. Middle console in this case with a matte wood atmosphere. We've also seen it in the Mercedes GLC, for example. It feels great and it looks great and doesn't leave any fingerprints. Instruments, classic Mercedes style, left speed, right RPM. And in the middle, for example, the digital speedometer and also the little steering wheel that shows when the assistance systems for the part autonomous drive are available. The infotainment screen also seems a little bit attached always. It doesn't fit to the overall great design to the interior. Also that we got those huge frames around. Um, love or hate is for those vents. Some love them, some hate them. I really think they're quite nice. Also the climate unit that has this horizontal layout, very well done. And matte aluminum style, also in interior, those central design and still very clear layout with a great build quality. A little bit born to the infotainment system. As you can see the GPS, I'm really satisfied with the Mercedes GPS. The reaction times are quite good and also the traffic information is great if you have this uh, um, optional command online system, which is quite cost intensive, but it pays off because when you sometimes, even if I know the route, I enter the route just to know the traffic information and it shows me directly the best way I can reach my destination. The menu is available right here with the pushing and turning navigator or also at the lower part and you always have a knob to go back into the main menu again. Um, vehicle information is always maybe the most interesting thing here. See also the convertible 
is being shown right here. And then you can, for example, also change the belt adjustment or uh, automatic mirror folding function and um, so on. Also the interior lighting, lighting delay, um, ambient light color. Only three colors are available here. I usually leave it with blue and I also put it to the highest brightness. Then it looks really great. What else I can show you here when I go back, for example, to the dynamic select or 360 camera as always also addressing. You see the left door is open right now and um, when I'm closing the left door then you can see that also the last camera gets available. It does not flicker that screen here by the way. It's just doing it on camera because the camera frame rate is better than the one of the screen. But however it has a very clear resolution overall and great really to see. You could also change the fake room from above when you want to park out somewhere then you can better see also to the sides. That's also a great system you can get optionally here. The dynamic select is here that you can um, see some vehicle data for example here. Um, turning angles of the wheels and stuff. More relevant for off-road driving which is not happening with that vehicle engine data. That's a fun aspect if you want to turn up the RPMs. And the phone is connected via Bluetooth, no Apple CarPlay available here yet. Storage space at the inside of the doors, you can lay a bottle down there, for example, not too much space. Then, very interesting how the vent is being here, <laughs> gripped in with a glove box here, very nice. There's a space here. Then in the middle console, again, this great wood I've shown you. You can open it, slides down smoothly, 12 volt power supply and the key to remove those beverage holders, which are adaptive, press this piece in the front, then you can also remove them and just use them as a normal case, if it's possible as well. Fix them here again. Then in the middle, lower console, you can open that one. Two USB slots available, SD slot, and um, yeah, put your mobile phone, your wallet here, for example and for your glasses right up here. For the rear passengers, when you turn the seat here, then it automatically slides to the front. That's nice. Also goes up a little bit. Have you seen it wrong? Nice. And then for rear passengers, well, there's not too much space. I'll test it right, right now, but um, see, four people could travel with here. And we will also soon take a look at the luggage compartment. Maybe that one holds also the one or other surprise. Now let me get inside the rear. I leave the seat as I would be driving and that might be a little bit critical then. Now as the move is open, ah, it's an easy entry here in the rear, definitely. But we've also seen with bigger converts that they... Uh, please, oh. yeah, you see, it's um, when the seats are electronically and they hit something, they move a little bit to the front again, so you have this security mechanism. So far, I think it's still okay. Maybe not the tallest driver would fit in front of me now, but even more exciting is now when I close the roof again, uh, what about the headspace then? And uh, how do I get out of the car? That might be exciting. There it comes. Hello. Ah, please don't kill me. But one well, thing it's still quite okay. Uh, there it is. There it's finished now. Um, I think I can also just lower the windows. Uh, maybe like this. That's um, not, not possible just to lower the windows. Um, then already the other roof mechanism is activated. Um, I put the seat in the front. They can see me better. So head space wise I have to duck a little bit. Um, I can't really sit upright. Um, with my one meters 86 and that is six foot one. So four adults does fit. Yeah, but you know, maybe not the longest top and only or better if you drive with the open top. So auto food is always about real tests live on tape and that's why we're also conducting a real live test here now with the luggage compartment. Two small trolleys and a backpack and Will it fit in there? I don't know. I have not tested it, so I'm as surprised as you. I can open the trunk with the key again. Well, the loading area is quite small. 
Oh, seems very limited, but I have closed the roof and so it is also possible to make the trunk a little bit bigger. In the Audi A5 convertible, this flip here, it flips automatically down again when you open the roof. You just have to put it in manual. Here, both way manual. That's well, one point for Audi, I think. Here, when it's closed, let's just imagine I would have opened the roof here right now already. It's still possible to put a small trolley as long as it's not too high beneath it. So that works also in a, um, in a vertical way, so that's no problem. And um, well, for example, with the Mercedes SL, um, you have the function now that the hardware is being raised up. That's also one good feature. Um, yeah, you have to <laughs> work it around a little bit, but you can see this setup does easily work. Even another backpack would be fitting in right here. And this way we could still drive with open top. So traveling with two people, no problem. And if you have the roof closed, then you would even have some more space above it. Um, so overall, I think quite a good result. And as an additional feature, look at that button right here. Let's test it. See it right here. Then the back seat gets released, but only if the ignition is turned on. And the same thing is also possible on the left side here. Second one. Too bad they don't flip automatically. You have to go to the rear part then. And there it is. Then you can flip the seats. Very well, it sticks a little bit. There it is. <laughs> there, very handy solution. And then, wow, that's very well usable for a convertible. And one more perspective from here how long you can load things through here. Even going on a ski holiday maybe would be possible. And one more complete look at the interior because you can also very well see that, especially with convertibles here with open top, the rear seats and the front cockpit, very beautiful. For the air scarf, you see the vents in, the, in behind because they're hidden beneath that one and blow the air to the front then. We won't need them today, <laughs> maybe with cool air. That would be a great idea. But here again, the cockpit overview. <laughs> Let's see what's beneath the hood. This one here, the C400. And my special tip, because it's not that expensive yet, but already has the petrol V6 engine with 333 horsepower. Then on top of that, there's a C43 we've already shown you and has a little bit more horsepower, but basically the same engine, 367 horsepower then, but not too much of a speed difference. And even to the C63, this one here is just one second slower from 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles an hour than the C63S. Um, the C63S is 4.1 seconds in this acceleration with the V8 and 510 horsepower, or if you don't pick the S version, um, just right below 500 horsepower. So you can remember again, as for the petrol engines, starts with two liter, four cylinder, three liter, six cylinder, and then the true AMG models, four liter and the V8, two, three, four liter. And then there's also a diesel available, 2.2 liter, four cylinder, so, but you know, for a convertible, I don't know, I maybe wouldn't go for it. So this one here would be my choice. Of course, the AMG models offer a better sound. We've heard that one here, but this one here suits the car very well. If you, you know, look at the overall power figure and the weight and, um, I mean, something uh, close to over five seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, that's really a good value already.
And now let's compare the interior from the standard convertible to the one of the AMG version. You can see it in detail with the seat belt help. As soon as I close the door, it slides to the front. When I open the door, get inside, it draws back. I close the door, when I sit down, it goes here again. This is a great help, isn't it? Let's get into the interior. And this one here, the AMG interior, is of course a little bit more special. Usually you get the standard sport seats. You can see them on the normal C convertible review as well. And you also get them for the AMG version. Those ones here, you also have a little bit of sound of the AMG in the background. Those ones here are the special AMG sports seats. You can get optional. You see they have more side support, but also, you know, they're harder, of course, in general, and I usually do not recommend them. And no matter what, if you pick the standard seats, they start with Dynamica on the inside, microfiber, and Artico leatherette on the outside. I love it, really, that Mercedes is offering that. Also, in the top level, they are offering real leather alternatives. However, those ones here, the bucket seats, also with the genuine leather equipment, we do not recommend. So, because top Test vehicles are usually just specced with the highest stuff you can get. Then, also my favorite feature, Alcantara, or in this case, a company of Dynamica, steering wheel here on the outside. You get a good soft grip for your racing style, flattened end. And we see a lot of racing elements, for example, here with those carbon fiber inlets in the middle part with the AG logo as well. So, all set on the very sporty right. And let me get inside. And recently, and now best greetings to Ethan in the UK because he has bought the C63, the Coupe, after watching our review. And he went for my advice to go for the, non, not for the bucket seats here, but for the standard seats and also with dynamic on the inside, standard equipment, leather red on the outside. And he said, Thomas, this was the best advice you can give me. Really satisfied with those, so I can also recommend you those one then here. Seating position in general, well, it's still comfortable as for, you know, comparing it with other true sports cars because the basis remains a mid-size sedan and therefore this one is always more comfortable than the normal ones. But as I said, you can go with big, bigger comfort if you just leave it with the center seats and also can save some money. Sporty cockpit in general, of course, flat and steering wheel is good for my long legs and, well, it feels like you should just start going and, well, Lumbar support we do have here. Um, here another electric control, for example, for the side of the seat. Here I can pump up the side, and also with this one I can pump up those here, the very side parts of the rear part, and everything else is controlled right here. For example, sliding in the front and back, and also the rear part. And this here is the seat heating placed here. Very nice, by the way, with here with the gloss and the matte aluminum. I love this style. A very great interior build quality we see. Instruments, special AMG instruments here, also with the checkered background and in the middle part you also get special AMG um, instruments for temperature and stuff and also um, there's G meter available, G force meter and for example a lap timer for your laps on the Nürburgring. Lower middle console Classic MMI, well, you call it that way at Audi. The multimedia interface here for scrolling in the map and you know, uh, going in the menu and pressing to select something. Always can go back here or also can go back with this button. Volume control here in the AMG version. We also got the special exhaust button to make it even louder, this special sport exhaust. And on the left hand side, you can control the driving modes, go to less. Um, ESP control for example and also that the gears are turned up higher when you go to a sport mode here. Suspension can be also stiffened up by that one. No airmatic suspension available here for the AMG models but you can still adjust them. So but of course not less comfort but more sportiness. And the convertible roof controls right here for the roof and for the air cap also gives us a light here when we activate it. And here this is the control where I could raise or lower all of the four windows at the same time. Infotainment, that's it here as we zoom in and out. We are near Trieste today. Special greetings to our Italian friends and grazie for watching Autogefühl. And the rest of the menu is hidden here. Connecting the phone via Bluetooth is possible. Um, 
it's like media, Bluetooth music, for example. And uh, vehicle information is always a little bit special with the AMG models. Um, here, oh wow, I also got the sporty visualization. 360 camera is available here optionally. Fake drone view from above. Um, here I can also see to the rear or also a little bit to the sides of the rear when you're parking out the car. Good safety feature, definitely. And dynamic select, for example, there you can see some information. Individual configuration, if you just want the suspension to be stiffer, for example. Vehicle data, always fun to watch while driving. Um, turning off the, off the wheels here, this is the red dot for a G meter that also goes to the red and front. Very nice feature as well, if you want to play around a little bit. And engine data, we'll let that one run when we drive the car that we see the horsepower turning up, 510 horsepower here in the C63S model from that V8. Storage spaces inside of the doors. It's here, quite shallow. Then the glove box, that is quite huge, also nice with the sparing out of the air vent. Great design with the metal aluminum as well, by the way. Then if we continue over to the carbon fiber, again, this mechanism from a good quality slides down very smoothly, 12 volt power supply adaptive beverages holders in here and you can place your smartphone for example but if you want to charge your smartphone you can go to the middle armrest console that I, I really like that feature that it opens here symmetrically two USB slots inside and good space for example for your camera equipment if you uh, store them uh, temporarily some, some action camera or stuff I always like to put them there and what about the versatility of this car also, if you have the bucket seats, they can be flipped right here and move forward electronically. That's a nice feature to get in the rear. Of course, while well, traveling with four adults, it's well easy to get inside when the roof is opened. I've already tested it also with the roof closed. Headspace-wise, I have to sit like this, so headspace-wise is limited. Uh, and knee space-wise, I'm kind of blocked in now and the front driver also doesn't have too much space. So it does work with four adults, yes. Um, maybe not for the longest trip and when it's open top it's always easier because the roof goes like here you can also see the detail again in the uh, full view of the whole c convertible overview but driving is open top also with the air cap system is also a lot of fun you can have a lot of fun with four people here especially as all four people can hear the power exhaust in this case then the trunk by the way the key it's still a classic style i would expect maybe a new one meanwhile has the amg logo on here the key and then on the here amg logo and on the other side i can open the trunk if the roof is folded up then i could also put that one in then have more height in the trunk but you see it is still possible here to put backpacks in here um, that is possible you can see it slide them away and so that also works when you put that one here not up so but you have to you know <laughs> play around with it a little bit so you do uh, have the space to, for example to go to the airport with four people um, that basically works and two buttons in here and here and then magic i can better show you that from from this side here you can flip down the seats remove the belts there it is and you can see <laughs> there are our trolleys you can well if your surfboard isn't too big also a surfboard could maybe fit in there that's a way to make the convertible rider even more versatile Now the most enjoyable part of this review, driving with the open top with the C-Class convertible C400. My special candidate for today, especially in Thomas blue and the bright interior. Just one change, I would pick the cloth seats and then I'm totally sold on this car here. We do drive not only the C400, the 3 liter V6, 333 horsepower just right over five seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles an hour acceleration. Also, we have the optional air suspension, Airmatic, equipped in this one here. And that means we got a very, very smooth ride. Sporty due to the rear wheel drive, of course, and you can always order the Formatic. Um, here, this is 
in indeed also a formatic wagon and um, still because the basis was rear wheel drive we also have the concept rear plus front so more torque remains on the rear drive but if you go for the basis version you start with the rear wheel drive here with the c-class also the standard suspension is already good but here with the Amatic one of the options maybe um, that is really paying off because even if there's some bumps here on the road wow that is smoothened out so well it's really like riding on clouds and especially when you are on your way cruising with the convertible that's a great feeling we have hired up the windows so we can talk to you better and I'm already feeling right now Hardly any wind is coming into the cabin and soon I can also test that one with the air cap but um, we'll have a better effect when we're driving faster and I can better test on how much air is being kept out by the air cap as well. So due to those um, testing also in the wind kennel they have managed that we have a convertible but it's still really silent in here. It's maybe one of the most silent convertibles we have driven so far when there's an open top. And well, that's one thing to mention definitely. The steering wheel feels quite natural. Well, the Mercedes steering wheels are not the most direct ones and no, not most progressive ones. You do need some steering waves, but here in this case is already better, for example, than in a standard sedan. So overall, I'm satisfied with that, especially as it has a compact steering wheel and you do have a sporty riding feeling. Even if you're a sports car guy, you would not miss a sporty feeling, although we are in a more typical mid-size sedan here. Just enjoyable here. We are in Trieste today, by the way, so greetings to our Italian friends. Ciao! Now we have some special Italian vents. Let's see how well if you go right here. Let's see. I have to do a circle here. Italian traffic. <laughs> and we're also going over some uneven roads is always good for testing. And well, the car is not exactly short, but they are also, of course, bigger convertibles. Also, for example, uh, I mean, if you think about S class convertible is available now. But already here with the C-Class, you get offered all of the luxury features you, you might even want to consider. So, I can almost tell, even if you have more money, maybe it's still better here to go for the C-Class convertible. Heard that sound here, by the way, already in the C400, I think we have a good sound. Maybe again. Wow. Wow, it's not an AMG model, but still you already got this great boost. Wow, great sound here. So one more argument, maybe not to, to spend too much money on the very, very high model. I mean, this is not cheap at all, of course. It's a premium product and Mercedes is always expensive in general, but they're always more expensive models. Ah, really great feeling to relax here. Just a little bit wind coming in here now with 50 kilometers an hour. Such a comfortable ride with the Hermetic air suspension and what I've mentioned earlier in the interior review. We have had some convertibles lately which were very sporty convertibles and still of course very fun to drive especially in agile situations. But you have to think about what's the part in your car driving time where you more cruise, enjoy and what's the part where you really can hammer the throttle and go to some curvy mountain roads? That's the question. And then you might have a decision which convertible you could go for. As we've recently shown the Range Rover Evolve convertible, the SUV convertible, that's also something very new on the market and um, this one is also one of my favorite segments here as it combines so much. So this one here is actually the compromise. You can go sporty with it but also use it very well for cruising. We also have different driving modes available here. I was in the comfort mode, there's the eco mode that's boosting the so-called sailing function. 
then um, we can save some more fuel or coasting it's also called then we got a sport mode maybe heard that one shift the gear down with the automatic gearbox here rpms go higher sport plus even more third gear now the rpms are drawn higher again and i got the nice sound as well great stuff everything i can also see in the head-up display by the way they found a very clear solution now they can see the current speed limit the speed i'm driving and also gps commands and there's also an individual driving mode where you can set different um, different characteristics for example here in the sport plus mode also the suspension is a little bit stiffer and so get more feedback on the road so this air suspension is usually first of all for the comfort but then again as you have the possibility here also let's accelerate now 50 to 80 in the sport plus mode watch out and is it well no i don't want to listen to this now <laughs> some mercedes advertisement so that went very fast um You've seen, of course, when I hammer down the throttle, the car wants to shift down first. But you also could hear the great sound. Here in the Sport Plus mode, I also get a good feedback from the road now. Ah, such a scenic drive here then. So also going some slalom. Good feedback, sporty feeling. Just to compare it with the Comfort mode. Here the car is tilting a little bit more. Feels softer. But already in the comfort mode, you do have an agile ride. But again, if you want to switch it a little bit around, then you maybe don't have to say, oh, damn it, I went for the air suspension, now the ride is too soft for me. You can set it. And even if you don't want the shifting characteristics to change, you can, for example, just set the suspension to stiffer and leave everything else as it is. That's the reason this individual mode is there. If you are not really okay with the common presets that were put in so cruising definitely more com comfortable for example with the, than with the Range Rover convertible although the Evoque is an SUV it's just has the stiffer suspension interesting fact here as well this one here definitely one of the most comfortable convertibles I know due to the good seats you can adjust them very well and of course especially the air suspension now driving 80 kilometers an hour and well what is missing here maybe um, is a huge wind deflector for the rear seats um, we do not have that one mounted at the moment that's also the reason why more wind is coming in there but let's see if we can solve that issue here with the air cap oh great great tunnel is coming now wow faced into the rock nice scenery here in the Italian border so let's see I'll put the air cap up now so there it is um, I do hear that I'm not sure if you hear it on camera I hear that the air cap is put up so it creates some wind noises extra wind noises and yeah, I think we have some less wind in here. Maybe that's it if I switch back again. Same speed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe you also see it at my shirt. There's more wind in here and more wind noise also in the central cabin. And what is changing as well is that in the rear, together with the air cap in the front, there's also an electric wind deflector raising in the rear. That's interesting. Not sure if you can see that um, here. Um, then we can show you that one as well. So that wind, small the wind deflector you've seen earlier is now really big. And that's also probably the reason why they've left out the huge wind deflector at the rear seats. The good thing is you have an electronic solution here where you don't have to switch it around when um, you, know, you want to get rear passengers. But, for example, we have seen in the Porsche 911 convertible, there was a huge wind effect deflector in the rear where you could put it in and out electronically. Best solution I've seen so far. 
This is definitely also a very interesting solution. It also will protect the rear passengers because usually the only solution you have having rear passengers in and wind deflector out or wind deflector in and no rear passengers. Here you can have wind protection and rear passengers. So probably the best convertible for four people open top convertible ride. Going a little bit fast here now. Wow. Great acceleration always from the engine. And it's everything you need. And I mean, you pay double the price that you get one second less acceleration for o, uh, from O to um, or one second faster acceleration from O to one kilometers an hour. And yeah, I mean, some say, me, I really want that AMG, I really want that V8 sound. But if you really look at price performance, this one here is already good if you want to combine very, uh, very, very strong power already and still don't want to pay that extremely much. Yeah, this is one of the cars which um, definitely come into, um, you know, into my favorite role because it offers sportiness, comfort and of course the open top riding. So if I think about other cars that you could compare with that one, Audi A5 convertible surely also a great car will be there in the new generation very soon. If you haven't seen the A5 Coupe world premiere, check that also out on Autogefühl. We've shown you that recently. And BMW 4 Series, we have also a review of the BMW 4 Series, but the Audi and the Mercedes offer a way better interior than the BMW. But then again, the BMW offers a good agile ride. But the most comfortable ride is again the Mercedes. And that's quite often we also score that result in, in other reviews that Mercedes, well, is maybe not the most agile car and um, Audi maybe has some more refinement in the interior. But as for the design in the interior and also for the comfortable ride, Mercedes usually leads it in our reviews, also if you compare it to the other German premium manufacturers. And so every brand has its specialties and so you just pick as a customer which one is the most important to you. We're here at Autogefühl, we will never say like, this is the best car of the world overall, because maybe it's the best overall car for, let's say, Peter, but not the best car overall for Michael. And so we just try to give a good advice for each preferences. Going a little bit slower here now. So let's see how, it's really funny with the air cap, really funny system. And well, if you're going slow, no air at all is really coming in here. And we got great panoramic roofs, views here out to the coast. Distronic Plus, talking about assistance systems. I just said it, leave my foot off the throttle and let the car roll. The Distronic Plus is my favorite adaptive cruise control overall in the market. Um, well, the, there are also other good ones. Um, Volvo has it figured out quite well. Meanwhile, also one Volkswagen Audi and stuff. They're also quite quite well um, off there. Um, but I think Mercedes has a really great solution here. The separate lever you have to get used to it, that you don't mix it up with the turning indicator. But when you're driven for quite a while, then you just figure that out. And also you can pick that assistance systems op optionally. Um, that is a steering or lane keeping assist. When you see a green steering wheel in the front, you can theoretically also leave your hands off the steering wheel and especially it would work on the Autobahn because the car sees the, the white lines on the road. After a while the car complains I should take um, onto the steering wheel so it's not thought for that it's a total autonomous drive. But basically it works already quite well. You see here there's a car. Uh, Sometimes maybe not. See, auto go through live testing. <laughs> I mean, often it depends, depends really on how good the car can read the road. Um, best is, for example, in traffic, when you maybe just leave your hand loosely on the steering wheel and the car a little bit steers itself. For example, here, I haven't you know, used any force at the steering wheel, just leave my hands on it, and then the car can keep itself a little bit more in the lane there. So, but it's not really necessary. The Distronic Plus, that's a good function that you can control the autonomous mode from driving 
throttle and braking, especially in traffic. That's great for Auto One driving. With the autonomous mode, as soon as it's not possible, totally autonomous, I'm not sure if I would pick those assistance systems there. Putting the lever in the front, remove the system again, and then I can just drive on my own again. So overall, a very convincing ride here. We did expect that. And maybe some last word, predecessor E-Class. Yeah, the E-Class convertible, although it was based on the C-Class, this one here feels agile now and it is more agile. And that will be also differentiation to the all new E-Class convertible that will come later. That one will be more focused on the luxury stuff, also on the infotainment stuff. And uh, will of course be huger, but I mean, in the rear seats, if you go for bigger convertibles, you won't really have more space in the rear. Um, so this one here also has a better using of you know space on the outside, ratio to space on the inside. Overall also a quite good result for this engineer. So that's it for those aspects. And I would say the only part that is missing to close up this day is one of the most fun parts. When we can hammer the throttle a little bit more, feel the sportiness of this engine and I'll check out if I can find some nice curvy roads for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to be cool. Sunglasses. And that means it's time for racing. Sport mode, let's go. Got some curvy corners here now, nice. Oh no, 30 again. But GPS says there will be a lot of fun corners now. Just this intermediate here. This could also work with 80 km just now, this corner here, doesn't it? <laughs> also, listen to the sound. I hope you can hear something of it. Nice. And still, although I'm in the sport mode, when there's some bumps on the road, no problem. The Amatic suspension does it all. Consumption, by the way, at the moment it heads towards 12 liters. Uh, it maybe go, maybe goes down when you're on the motorway riding uh, quite often. Hmm. But in general, yeah, this V6 also uses fuel. That's no news. So. 10 to 12 liters is a realistic value. So if you want to save fuel, go for the diesel, but then you also don't have such a great sound. That's feasible already. Of course, the most aggressive sound than with the V8, as we've heard already. The car feels very good to control. A lot of fun, same driving fun than we had in the, with the Coupe. And maybe you remember our Coupe review. We also had some Amatic suspension in there and also the C400. And that one was also a great combination, so I got that one there already. Here, also in Italy, might uh, <laughs> have to react on some opening doors in the street, something like that. Always good to have good agility for that one as well. Doesn't feel too big. It's really a natural driving talent. I mean, some cars say feel go kart alike. They're very well to control in general, but they somehow feel artificial. This one here also feels natural in the steering. Just enjoy some more convertible riding here with me. using 
shifting pedals now. You can even drive sporty by, by those. What do you think, guys? So one short conclusion in between to the open top driving and the wind features. Well, it's a very spectacular feature with the air cap here. And um, that you also can see that wind deflector in the rear. So air cap here in the front and then air flows over here and then the wind, def wind deflector. Maybe it's a good solution for the rear passengers, but you can see there are no holes here to mount a big wind deflector here. And we have felt it while driving. Now today it's warm, it's no problem. But I must say, in this case, I'm a little bit disappointed because I'm very sure that a big wind deflector right here, covering this area here and going right up here, would have been more effective to cut out wind, as we've also seen in, in other, other convertibles. And, well, either you go for them in a manual way or, as I said, as we've seen in a 911 convertible facelift, electrically retractable. That was the best solution I've seen so far. So I would favor that one over this air cap system with the deflector here. And another important information. So I wasn't that convinced of the air cap system, but well, it's the best solution if you're driving with four people. However, if you're just traveling with two people always or alone, then it's also possible to go for the classic wind deflector and then they add some holes here. Well, it will still look clean. It's probably no problem. Um, it will be done also in the, in the plant then. And then you can get a classic wind deflector like this, an angular style, and this one will protect you best against the wind. So two people get the classic wind deflector. It's just a couple of uh, hundred euros extra. And if you're a lot of traveling time with four people, maybe as a family, then go for the air cap system. But you have to be sure it's not that effective than the classic one. And now we start a round, that was the only thing missing, with closed top riding, because those new soft tops, they are insulated very well. And we drive 50 kilometers now and check our dB meter. What? 62, 65 dB. That's a better result than we have in some other closed cars. Maybe because, you know, we have, uh, I mean, cloth itself is insulating. Um, you use it, for example, also in restaurants, beneath like tables or chairs or at the, at the ceiling to make something more silent here. Wow, great result. Let's um, also drive a little bit faster maybe. Yeah, raises up to 70 dB at 70 kilometers now approximately. But still, it's really silent in here. In meters, and therefore, I can also understand why Mercedes has decided that all of the future convertibles, or at least most of them, will just stay with a soft top. It really makes sense. You know, it doesn't add more weight to the car. Now it's really it would be more silent if the GPS would shut up as well. <laughs> um, it's, it's really silent in here. And you could close it and open it until a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. Um, it's always hard to show that in camera when we have both cameras mounted um, because the one camera would be sucked into the window, then that's not a good idea. But overall, one of the very surprising things, I think it's the most silent Mercedes convertible ever and I think it's also more silent than the SL for example. So 
they have really done a very good job here. Audi was leading there with the um, so-called acoustic roof where we have could, or the standard roof and then optionally one with more layers that's better insulated and well this one here does a very good job now definitely. So closed riding you can get close to the coupe so it's not that you maybe lose some agility you have in the coupe you maybe only realize it on the racetrack but not in normal driving and well the only difference it will make when you're at very very high speeds we can only test it in germany for example like going 160 on the motorway then you will still have a difference between coupe and convertible but the question is who is always driving with a closed convertible 160 on the motorway and then maybe not listening to music because as soon as you listen to music then also it won't make such a big difference as the music is maybe evening out uh, the other wind noises. So also with the closed top here a very good result and the only thing you use with the convertible in comparison to the C-Class Coupe is this even a little bit more beautiful Coupe style line on the exterior everything else. Why not just go for the convertible? And beneath the hood, this V8 here says the sign handcrafted by, this, by the Angelo Di Maro. And this was one man, one engine concept. This V8 here in the C63S has 510 horsepower, acceleration of 0 to 100 kilometers an hour for 4.1 seconds. The C63 without S is 4.2 seconds. So four liter of displacement here. However, if you go for the V6 with three liter in the C43 AMG, the so-called AMG light version, it already has most of the AMG features inside, but with the all-wheel drive, this one here rear-wheel drive, the C43 would then be all-wheel drive, but, but predominantly with a rear-wheel bias. Again, as I said, V6 when the three liters of displacement and the acceleration there from 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles now is about one second more than so this one here of course the fastest version but the other ones already fast as well some of you might wonder what about the launch control here at the mercedes models you do not have to turn off the esp completely it's enough when you go into sport mode and then hammer the brake and both shifting pedals at the same time here pressing then shift the pedal up then the race start is active, you can press the brake with the left foot and right foot here, the throttle, and then you could release the brake. Here today it's very wet, it would make no sense, but we have tested it with the coupe version if you want to see the launch control in action. And now the riding part with the C63S. Woo, got the sport exhaust on as well. I can also show you the difference off. It's like this, listen. Already loud of course. And now switching it on. Okay, <laughs> I think you heard the difference even on camera. And I'm rather staying in the comfort mode here. The road is still wet and even in the comfort mode, you've seen it on our um, shots from the outer and maybe also seen it now here. Even in the comfort mode, this is here rear wheel drive only, car slides out. Um, so the more handy car for the everyday riding is the C43 or the C400 with the all wheel drive. You got better control. You can still get rear wheel bias, 70, 30 percent. Um, but here only rear wheel drive and that's so much power on the rear wheels. You can rather only control it on um, dry ground. And as soon as you go, for example, into the sport mode, then the ESP, the stability control, is drawn back. And then you got even more rear wheel spin. And that's even harder to control, really just um, good for the dry race trick. So we'll have some handy corners as well that you can enjoy that as well. Well, that's of course a big difference from the sound, also again from the C43, definitely. 
The question is, do you really need it? Do you really want that? It um, can be very emotional, but, well, double the price. And the C43, uh, for example, is around 60,000, the C400 as well. That's for a lot of people more realistic than go for above 80,000 for the C63. Then. Also, the head-up display is a little bit different here, and that one looks sportier. The RPM meter is stressed. There's no airmatic air suspension available here, but we can still change the suspension from the three driving modes. So when I go to the sport mode, gears turn up higher and also got more contact. The steering wheel itself, the steering is more direct. Oh, we got a great connection to the road. That's a difference, for example, from riding the C400. Uh, here you need less turning and you can stay with both hands on the steering wheel all the time. And Sport Plus, maybe heard that as well, exhaust, even louder, the exhaust button gets activated automatically when I'm in the Sport Plus mode and suspension even a little bit stiffer. If you really want the most comfortable ride, then you have to go for the air suspension in the C400. As soon as you go to the C43 or then C63, you get the Sport suspension, which is a, well, a rather classical one, and there you can not have the air suspension. It's still a comfortable suspension, no question, a great suspension, but here the sportiness is really stressed. That's, and I mean, as it's still adaptive, you can also choose it between this ratio, how sporty you want it or not. So this is, by the way, the race mode, the final mode. This is only for the racetrack because there you can really let the rear end slide out even on dry terrain. So we're going to change direction here now and that we can go up the hill again to show you some more funny stuff. By the way, here now you see one more one push at the throttle and the rear end slides out, especially when the road is a little bit wet here. So I'm going to the comfort mode. Um, little wheel spin is allowed there, but then the electronic stability control catches the car um, because here on public roads, I don't want to risk so much for me and of course for other people. But I'm putting the exhaust button on that you can enjoy this ride. And I would say, I'll pause my speaking for just a second. Enjoy. So using the shifting pedals here now to have a little bit more fun, to be in a lower gear for you. And one more time and another mode here, Sport Plus mode. And then also the shifting, but that one, when I'm shifting up and down. Rumba! <laughs> so if you're in the Sport Plus mode, the shifting transitions are even harder and shifting down you got that throttle blip. So, wow, <laughs> that's a sport experience and of course still makes a difference if you have the roads to drive that one then. That's of course, of course always um, something you need to have because, you know, just in normal traffic, you don't have too many chances to drive in such a way then. So, and now we get on the public road to also to show you some, you know, normal riding, always also part because you can also go in a comfort mode then and if you leave the exhaust button deactivated just on normal rpm you can drive it relatively silent and going over some bumps here now on the normal surface road it's not that uncomfortable actually so the normal the, the sport suspension although the car also sits lower here in the C-Class convertible, you can still drive comfortable. And that's also a big difference, for example, to some of the very true sports cars. That's why I usually also recommend when someone asks me, ah, I want 
a great sporty car, but I also want to maybe use it as a primary car, then this one here would still work. It does not have to be a secondary car, although it's an AMG. And I think that's also a very good key finding here. So I would have expected it to be less comfortable, but it's definitely sporty enough. I really love the steering wheel with the Alcantara sides. I'm not sure if that is also possible that you can order it in the standard version. That's so complicated with the German premium cars because you have so many options and then some of the markets are again then different um, you know as for the trim levels and you really have to dig deep into the price list that you can see it such a nice direct handling here and driving with the open top is of course always enjoyable I've talked about it also with the air cap better protection when you got the big wind deflector in the rear and you can get that. It's not spec with this car here. Why is Mercedes offering it here? Because in the E-Class convertible, funny fact, 80% of the customers went for the air cap system. Okay, E-Class convertible, maybe also different customer groups from now. The C-Class, a little bit smaller. There will be a new E-Class convertible as well. That is really huge, but still, I think a lot of people will pick the air cap system, but if you watch this review, this review and don't have rear passengers quite often, then I can really tell you go for the big wind deflector. Then you can always also drive zero degrees Celsius in the winter times, 120 on the autobahn. That will work. With the air cap, no. You just have the advantage if you have the two people in the rear then. And now the conclusion, Mercedes C-Class convertible. My conclusion is, my personal one, dear Santa, next time for Christmas, for me, in this color, but only if you leave the skin of your reindeer on the animals and don't put them on the seats. And then I am perfectly satisfied. And <laughs> to the factual side, exterior, really a very beautiful car and not with those rather ugly taillights in my opinion from the sedan of the c-class really those horizontal shape a very central design aggressive in the front the interior design is unmatched from the design part in my opinion one of the most beautiful interiors overall and well we have a quite good using of space the front also rear passengers and for the trunk as well of course, in the convertible, you cannot, can never store that much stuff in. But here, also, for example, with flipping your seats, that's still quite okay. Also, when the roof is closed, the car looks very beautiful. Also, you can get it in four colors. I think they have managed that one very well. Also, the build quality is at a very high level. It's only that the price is already at a very high level. And therefore, I recommend if you want performance, luxury and comfort, C400 all-wheel drive. Airmatic air suspension, that's you know, kind of a, a wish combination, and you don't pay that much of a high price. That, for example, for the AMG models, and this one, as we've shown you, and maybe also you heard it and seen at the facts and figures, already has way than enough power. And I also want to hear your opinion which one would you go for? A very small one from the engine, maybe, maybe a diesel, maybe the smallest petrol engine. There are also 1.6 liter petrol engine available for example at least in Germany in the US only the bigger ones would you also go for the C400 would you also go for Thomas Blue or are you maybe more a C43 guy or a very hardcore C63 maybe also S guy put me that one in the comments feedback to this review feedback to this car what's your dream convertible is it that one I want to know and I hope to see you at the next Auto Food episode oh very hot from the sun with Thomas <laughs> and I really hope again with the convertible but not so many convertibles on the market Mercedes is going convertible all the way I'm glad they're doing it so we could deliver you that here today thank you very much for watching see us at the next episode of Autoq Fuel